Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lashara Noel from How About Them Apples Teacher and I'm so glad that you're here today. Today I wanna to talk to the parents specifically. I've gotten a lot of questions from my parents for the math curriculum as far as what can my child do at home to support the learning that you're doing in the classroom? Or what can my child do if they're sick? But the biggest question that I've gotten is how do you teach this stuff? Believe me, I understand, I get it. I had to relearn so many things before I could start teaching this modern math technique. It's crazy, I totally understand. It's hard to relearn something that is that you've learned way in the past and to be able to teach that to someone can be really a difficult challenge. I completely understand, I know how you feel. So today I want to talk to the parents specifically about the Pearson Realize and Vision Math Curriculum, the online version for their students. My goal today is to hopefully alleviate some of that stress of not knowing exactly what's happening so that you can be more successful with your student and help them achieve the greater things that they are meant to achieve. Before we get started, I wanna remind you to subscribe to my page. And just in case you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up button and click that little ring bell button so you get notified whenever I post new videos for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and let's see what we can figure out about this curriculum. guys, let's go ahead and get started. This is the main Pearson Realize screen. This is what you're going to want to type in. You're just going to want to type in pearsonrealize.com and it'll take you to this page. From there, you're going to click sign in. This page is the page that I would suggest bookmarking for your browser if you're wanting to use this on a regular basis at home. When we sign in with our username and password, your student has a special username and password that your teacher will give to you. For my class, for example, their username is their first name dot last name at bromleyeastcs.org and their password is going to be PASIC205 with a capital P. We have an imaginary student in our classroom. His name is Hot Dog Billy Bob, so we will be going into his account for this video. So, I'm going to go ahead and type in username, password, and click sign in. All right, all students are going to be taken to this page. There are two versions of this page. One is for the more middle school looking, and while this one is for more elementary um, students. So I'm going to take you through both of these, so don't worry, but I want to start with my work first. This is where your student is going to have their assignments, such as practice buddies, quick checks, and their topic tests. Hot Dog Billy Bob does not have any assignments because he is in his own little classroom, so that's why you don't see them here, but they will show up right here so that you can make sure that your students get those done on time. This next one is e-text. I would suggest not using these because this is your entire workbook online. So it can, it can be very difficult to navigate, so I tend to stay away from that, but I will show you an easier way to access this information in just a second. The main one that I wanna talk about today is the tools. Now these are all of the tools that they might need. So we have game centers to help reinforce the content that we're learning in the classroom, a glossary in case your student forgets what a word means or wh what it's talking about. But the biggest one that I'm excited about are these math tools. These are amazing and I'm so excited to use them in my classroom. Whenever it says open a new window, go ahead and click in that. It's actually just going to open up in a brand new tab. That's okay. Keep this tab open though because it is the main page. So you're going to go back to math tools and today I'm only going to show you two. 
Um, that way you can kind of explore the rest of them on your own. But since we are in the current topic of fractions, we're going to go ahead and use these. And all of these things have different ways to use fractions. So I'm going to give you an example of fraction strips. All right, these are our fraction strips. What I love about these is that you can click and drag and manipulate however you want to. So if I want one eighth or if I want three eighths, I just click the three and all three will drag over. Another really cool thing about this is that you can click it and then click the hammer and it'll um, separate these into one eighths instead of three eighths. So that's really great. So when you're trying to figure out how many eighths are in one hole, you can easily access that way. You can also have a number line show up. It is just really cool. I really love this program. You can erase stuff. There's um, text boxes where students can type something and then they can move it around. So this is a really great opportunity for your students to be able to manipulate things if they don't quite understand a problem, especially at home. Um, they can use these fraction tiles very easily. The next one I'm going to show you is our number charts. We are currently in multiplication and division, but right now we're going to stick to multiplication. And the awesome thing about this is that yes, it only goes to nine. However, if you click on the set chart button, um, you can click all the way up to 10 for both of them. And then it'll show you all the way up to probably wherever you want. So you can know that 18 times 18 is 324. Most multiplication charts do not go that high. They only go 12 by 12. So if your student is having some issues with multiplying two digit by two digit numbers, they can always reference this for help. So that's just a really great way to add a little bit more interest in our math problems and allow your students to be able to understand their math problem using these strategies. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. So I just exited that tab and then I'm going to click exit here. And that's pretty much all I want to show you from the tool section. So we're going to go ahead and click back. And the meat and potatoes of this video is this explore section. This is going to be awesome. So you're going to click on this. And then this is the curriculum that we are currently in. It's the fourth grade curriculum. Now the fourth grade curriculum is divided up into topics and then lessons within that topic. So for example, we just finished topic eight. So now we are going to start topic nine. So I'm going to go ahead and click in there. And then these are the lessons. So the lessons are one, two, three, four. So you'll see that the topic is the first number nine and then the second number is the lesson one. We are going to look at lesson nine dash three today. And I'm gonna go through all of these different things. So first, this button right here, um, it is basically the workbook in the online form, just like I was telling you before. However, I don't really like the layout of this and you have to have special plugins for your browser. So I would just stay away from this and I would actually access number two. Number two is an interactive student workbook that they can use online. So this is the solve and share. We actually do this as a class. All right, this is our guided practice page. This is a page that we go through as a class. We especially go through the guided practice and then depending on how they're feeling, sometimes we go through independent practice as well. But I wanted to show you a few things that you can do here. This is their access bar and you can click and drag it down um, for easy access. But in this toolbar, you have a drawer you have a stamper or a counter, and then you have an eraser. And you have an undo button and a redo button. You also can have text boxes to add text. And you can have this, which is the shapes, number line, grids, and fraction tiles. We're actually going to use this today. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how we can use this. So I'm going to work on problem number seven and I'm going to use fraction tiles to help me. So because my denominator is in the eights, 
I'm going to use my fraction tile eights. For some reason, it always comes up really big like that. I don't understand why, but I just go ahead and shrink it and move it downward. Then I'm going to click on my marker and click a color, and I'm going to shade in two eights. So one, two. Then with a separate marker, I'm going to color in one eighth. So now I have two eighths plus one eighths equals three eighths. And if I want, I can type that to be equals three eighths. Click outside of it and then click and drag it. Just like that. If you wanted to write it as well, if your student is super talented with writing with a mouse, uh, you can also do that. So you could do three eighths. So those are just some really cool things that you can have your students do at home. Uh, but like I said, this is the page that we generally do together. However, for your convenience, we also have a page that is a homework and practice page. That's this, that's this one. It says homework and practice. Um, this is the one that if I do assign homework, this is the page that I assign. If I don't assign homework, then you can have your student do this at home. Make note though that you cannot print this page from your home. So you either have to have me do it or your student can rip out this page from their workbook at school and bring it home. So I just wanted to share that really quick. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of that. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you are the two different videos that you can watch with your students to help you understand the concepts that are being taught in class. This first one is number four, it has a little eyeball, and it's called our visual learnings. This is the one that we go through as a class together and they follow along with this. So even though they already probably know what the visual learning is, you can still go over it with them to help reinforce what we were learning that day. So this is kind of what the video looks like. fractions with like denominators. Let's take a look at a couple of different ways. The table shows the results of a fourth grade pets club survey. What fraction of the club members chose a hamster or a dog as their favorite pet? Two twelfths of the club chose a hamster as their favorite pet. Four twelfths of the club chose a dog as their favorite pet. What operation will you use to solve the problem? Select your answer. Using a model. Two twelfths plus four twelfths equals one twelfth plus 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 one twelfth which equals six twelfths. All right, so as you can see, they give you a problem to work on, and then they kind of help guide you as to how to solve that problem as the lesson. So this video can sometimes be quite difficult to understand. Um, if that's the case, there is a second video that I'm going to show you that's a little easier to understand and that is called the Another Look video. This video is number seven. However, sometimes it's number six because they don't always have games for the lessons. Um, for this version, it is number seven. So we're just going to click on it and then we'll see kind of how simplified it is. Hey everybody, how you doing? Did you know we can add fractions just like we add whole numbers? Yeah, and it's really easy if the fractions have like denominators. Like denominators, you ask? Well, that's just a fancy way of saying that fractions have the same denominator. Check these out. Two-sevenths and five-sevenths, one-eighth and three-eighths. So, what if you want to add two fractions with like denominators, like three-twelfths and five-twelfths? How would you figure it out? Hmm. Well, let's model with math. 
draw a number line from 0 to 12 twelfths, which is really just one whole. Starting at 0, let's count up. So 1, 2, 3 twelfths. From there, let's count up another 5 twelfths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twelfths. Now let's count the total number of twelfths that we moved. So as you can see, this video is a little bit simpler to understand in case you were having a hard time with that first video. So I did want to show that to you in case you were having a hard time because I was also having a hard time when I was first learning how to teach this. <laughs> um, so let's go back here. Um, some of these other things like number three and number five, those are things that we do in class together. However, you can go through them with your student if you want to. This first one is our solve and share. We do this one every single day together. We just, we read the problem and then we make note of the things that we know about the problem and what the problem is asking us to do. So if you'd like to go over that with your student and have them share what they did in class that day, you are more than welcome to do that. The other thing that I wanted to show you is the convince me. I don't use this a whole lot, it's number five. I don't use it a whole lot, I kind of use it as exit tickets every once in a while to see if they understand the concept. So if you want your student to do this to show you what they worked on, that day, again, you are more than welcome to do so. But as far as the curriculum goes, that's pretty much it. Every single child has access to all of this content. And then the things that the teacher will assign are going to be in that um, my work section under the assignments. Unfortunately, you can't see any of those assignments because Hot Dog Billy Bob is a fictional character. So you won't be able to see those assignments. But I did want to show you just the things that are automatically assigned to students that they have full access to. So if you want to review any of these topics with your students, you are more than welcome to do so. On the flip side, this topic 17 is also a step up to grade 5 as well. So I just wanted to give you all of the content that is available for all students. All right, guys, that's it for today. I really hope that I was able to share with you some of the things that we are learning in the classroom so that you can support your students. If you have any questions or ideas for content, please leave a comment down below and I will definitely respond and try to get back to you. If you have found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you know someone else who might benefit from this, go ahead and share it out for me. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day. Bye.